Hello, friends. I'm Bernard Watts. Thanks for tuning in to Sports Talk with D. Watts Entertainment, along with Rob the Man Media and Coach Dre. We have an exciting broadcast for you tonight. If you don't mind, pick up your phone, text someone, email someone, let them know. Come to YouTube on Sports Talk with D. Watts page or Raw the Man Media page and tune into the show. But we just want to let you know that tonight's broadcast is brought to you by the Whitakers Builders Supply in Jackson, Georgia. If you need lumber, windows, doors, sheetrock, roofing, bricks, cement block, nails, or more, contact Wayne Whitaker at 770-775-2086. That's Whitaker Building Supply. If you're a contractor, you need lumber, Windows, doors, sheetrock, roofing, bricks, cement blocks, nails, or uh, cabinets. Contact Wayne Whitaker at 770-775-2086. They are the sponsor for tonight's broadcast, and we want to thank Wayne Whitaker for doing that for us. We appreciate him. I uh, want to give a shout out to him. I know he's tuned in. He's been tuning in ever since we've been on the air. And I also want to give a shout out to my supervisor, Miss Mary Joe. Appreciate it for that. All right. All right. Let's see. Let's get down to the show. So can I get Raw the Man Media up? And uh, him and Coach Dre. Add him to the stage. Yo, 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 yo. What's up, buddy? What's the word? What's the word? What's the uh, word? Y'all doing all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's yes, good. Sir. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Can y'all hear me? Got you, yes, got sir. You all, clear. all right. All right. Hey, man. Uh, y'all had a good weekend? Oh, man. It was great, man. Shout out to the uh, South Carolina Gang Cops, man. Coach Staley, you did your thing. Uh, shout out to Kaylin Clark. Hell of a season. Uh, I just want to give you know credit to the women's uh, basketball uh, because they they have brought this sport um, to a new generation to a new level that it, it's never seen before. So man, shout out to the women uh, for doing their thing. Shout out for all the ladies that performed um, at a high level all season and in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Uh, before we move on, Coach Ray, you got anything you want to say before we move on? I hey man, we just, uh, you know, just bless and highly favor to be here. Um, you know, just um, want to give a big shout out to the sponsor. Uh, you know, we couldn't do this without y'all. And, uh, and for the people that's watching, we appreciate all the love and support that y'all show. Myself, Robin, man, and uh, my man, B-Watt. All right. Appreciate y'all for that. All right. Hey, while you're on that subject, let's dive right into it. But y'all, y'all watch the game, man. But check this out now. Before we get to that championship game, let's go back to the Connecticut game. That that play uh, where the referee made that call. I got to ask you a question. And the chat also, too. Did Connecticut get robbed on that call for that game? Start with you, Coach Ray. Uh, I just I, I think you got to hold your whistle on that. I mean, you don't – the ref shouldn't – decide the ball game. The ball game should be decided by the players. And uh, when you put yourself in a position right then to uh, to control a basketball game, that's kind of tough. Uh, you know, who is to say what would have happened? I just wish that that wouldn't have been a scenario to uh, put a dark cloud over that, that semifinal uh, game. Because now it's like, uh, do you think that um, UConn should have been in the national championship game, yeah. and so that 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 that's the biggest question with everything, and it make it look like you know you want to have you want to have certain people in certain spots, and you know money don't don't let it fool you guys. Money pushes a lot of the envelopes, right. uh, but I just wish I just wish the referee would have would have held his whistle right there and not blew it. What you think, Rob? All I can say is you seen it from a mile away coming. <laughs> it was just, it just, it was just seen it from just, I, I guess kept saying, I said, um, I was just sitting back, I was watching the game with a group of people. And I said, there's no way that I was not getting to the championship game. I don't care what happened. When I would turn that ball over late in that game, I knew something fluke was going to happen to help Iowa win that game. 
um, just because they 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 wanted the ratings. They didn't want UConn in there with South Carolina. They wanted Iowa versus South Carolina since you couldn't get LSU. So it was, it was just and you just can see it coming from a mile away. Um, but like I said, man, shout out to the ladies. Shout out to UConn. They played a hell of a season. Through they did. They battled through uh, with all the injuries that they had um, to get where they got to. I mean, you got you got to just take your hands off to them because it's just it's a blessing to see uh, what them ladies put in uh, the blood, sweat, and tears, and um, and reaching that type of level with all the injuries they they endured the entire season. Man, oh yeah, I agree with y'all. They, they, I think they got robbed, man. So, but it is what it is. I want to say congratulations to Don Staley and the South Carolina Gamecocks. Uh, man, they didn't lose the game this year, so uh, the championship went where it's supposed to win. So, I want to say congratulations to her. And I think she was an excellent coach. I hope some NBA team pick her up or at least let her be assistant to uh, to bring some of her coaching skill to the organization. But anyway. We'll get back into that later on after the show. It is, I, There's a say? coach out there named Tamika Reed. That's Josh State coach. Some Paul Five need to go ahead and just give her a job, man, and start with the nonsense, man. She's a Paul Five coach. She did everything that she's supposed to do with the HBCU, man. Stop tr- and put some respect on the HBCUs, man. She's done what she's supposed to do. She's dominated and give her opportunity at the Paul Five. That's all I got to say. And I'm going to leave it at that. You I, I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. But, uh, all right, let's get on with the show, talk about Coach Brown and the Colorado Buffalo. Uh, before I want to get into the screen practice day, I just want to go back for a little bit. Uh, when Coach Brown announced that he was leaving Jackson State to become Colorado head coach, what was your reaction then, Rod? Start with you. What was your reaction? My initial reaction was uh, I loved it because it was somewhere where it wasn't predictable, right? Every place that the possible places where he could have went, it was everything was predictable. Oh, what did he do here? Where did he do that? Uh, going to Colorado and living in Colorado, it was just a breath of fr- fresh air, right? Um, because you've seen the the losing mentality, you've seen the style of players that they had on that roster, you've seen you know the way the the state of they just wanted to win, they just wanted something in there that they can stamp on there. Um, just because the Broncos, you know, how they look right now. And so they just wanted to brush their fur for her. And I think, you know, with having Coach with Coach Prime picking them, the hype just went to another level that, um, you know, Colorado wasn't ready for at the at the beginning. You know, um, now that it's happened, you know, you, you got to start winning, right? Um, you got people to believe in you. You got people to, you know, donate. You got people to shed light on Colorado. And put them in a bigger round, but the initial the initial wave being in Colorado when it initially happened, um, it was exciting. Um, it, it had the whole state um in a shock um because nobody in the state thought it could be done. Um, but they got the job done at the end of the day, and you got shout out to rejoice for um getting it done. Uh I, I don't think I was shocked. Uh I knew it was coming. I knew he was going to get a bigger job. I just didn't know it was going to be the University of Colorado. Um, I just thought that that it was time for a change for him uh, and for him to put his coaching skills and his way of coaching on a bigger stage as uh, for black, especially for black head coaches, because you you don't get a lot of opportunities, not a lot of black head coaches. And I think uh, we needed that. And so I was, I was very pleased with uh, Colorado taking a, a chance on a guy like Coach Prime because, uh, like I say, this ain't his first time around the uh, this ain't his first time around the rodeo, and uh, I think he's gonna show the world what what he can do as a football coach and as a human being, but more of what he's doing for these young people as 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 making them young men. You can't you can't uh, you can't value that. Uh, like you say, even with Don Staley, you get what I'm saying. That that's the kind of stuff you got to see so that more more black coaches can get those opportunities. And I think, with, I, like I said, I was very happy, I, but I wasn't shocked. I just didn't think it was going to be Colorado. I thought one of the SEC teams or uh, somebody else was, was going to try to pull the trigger first. But I'm just glad Coach Prime did what he felt was best, and I think Colorado was the best fit for him at that time. All right. All right. Uh, I want to say thanks each and one of you who tuned in to the broadcast tonight. Uh, also, 
thanks to the people who are putting their comments in the chat. Well, we hope you keep it going all night. We appreciate y'all hanging us with us. Promise I won't hold you long, but but I will but I'm 30 minutes and we'll be off there. All right, check this out. I just had the spring uh spring game and uh spring practice, spring practice rather, not the game. But then we've seen a lot of videos out there and the spring game is um uh, it's approaching for prime time weekend. Coach Prime has named it prime time weekend. Would it be anything like the Super Bowl weekend or what y'all think it's gonna turn out to be? You think Coach Prime's gonna do it up? I already got Lil Wayne coming to perform. I mean, any anything you ever seen do he do it big. So what you expect is something that's gonna put on a show and gonna uh put on for the city of Boulder and his university and his kids. Uh, he's never done anything that's uh lackluster or under average. So I expect it to be you know what what his quality of uh, perfection is so i expect it to be, be an event but you know at the, the day it's just more hype and more uh, uh eyes for these young men you know you you gotta like that you know what i'm saying that he's taking the step out again he's doing it his way he's not doing it the conventional way he's not letting nobody change the way he thinking or the way he want to do things you know he's gonna do it his way and for that you got to stand up and applaud for that you got to stand up and applaud when you look at prom weekend it's gonna be electrifying um everything that anything that it, nothing is impossible that could happen that weekend i'm just gonna say that nothing is impossible uh the celebrities who you could see that weekend in boulder it, it just it could be at a whole other level um something that you haven't seen nowhere else so just get ready um for those who can make it to Boulder, I know everybody won't be able to make it to Boulder, and I wish it wasn't on Pac-12 Network and it was on a bigger stage where everybody can see. But that's just the nature of how everything is, right? Um, just because they, just because the Pac-12 had the rights, and that was just basically a way to them generate money uh, before Colorado leaves, because they have to wait till August first until the, they can wash their hands completely with the Pac-12 Network, um, and that's the only thing that sucks about it. But when you look at it in generosity, uh, it's going to be one crazy and powerful weekend for the University of Colorado. Um, they're going to generate a lot of money. And you just hope that um, everybody has a great time and, and nobody does any knucklehead stuff. That's all. Mm -hmm. I just had a uh, spring practice uh, again this weekend. Uh well, I me to show some videos and some players were standing out to me. What y'all think about Michael Welch, uh, the running back? I seen some plays, man. This dude look like he's the one, boy. <laughs> hey, wait. Hey, Coach Drake. Hey, but like the show says, can he help us win? Can Michael Welch, the freshman from Georgia, from the state of Georgia, can he help us win? I'll go first. Um... When you look at short distance goal line situations, um, you can see Michael Welch and Savion Wilkinson in that spot um, as I short down distance. So um, the ability to can he help us win? I um, mean, he can definitely help us in short yardage to help us win games. He can definitely help us at the goal line. Uh, one thing I know about Prime, he don't care if you're a freshman or if you're a senior. If the opportunity is given, and hey, you better go produce. Um, and if you show that you can produce, hey, you gonna play. Um, so that's one thing I, you know, you can say about Coach Prime, you can and, and Coach Hart. I mean, not Coach Hart. Um, running back, I don't know, not Coach Hart, because everybody been on them. But it just goes to show you that, um, you know, Prime will get opportunity. He's gonna lead up to his position coaches, right? At the end right. of the day, he's gonna lead up to his position coaches. But if you go in there and you put the work in. And you grind out and you earn your reps, you're gonna have opportunity. Okay. All right. And also in the video, man, that Shiloh look like he on another mission, man. What? <laughs> he taking out his own, he taking out his own player, man. I think Shiloh trying to get that first round draft pick. What you think about Shiloh so far this year? Oh, uh, I mean, I love the message he put out. Let's just start with the message that Shiloh put out. <laughs> right. You know. You know I like I always tell people, you never know who's tuned in to the show. 
you never know who's watching this or that. And so when you go and run your mouth, you better have facts to bag it up what you're saying. Um, you better you better be reliable uh, because one thing about it is they're going to check your background. They're going to check to see who you are. They're going to check to see who you know. Um, so, you know, when Shallow was addressing people about his PFF and how many touchdowns he actually gave up, how many missed tackles he gave up, that's, you know, him going to vert, you know, him just going to show you that when you come, when you come out of Sanders, you better have your facts right. You better stand on business is what we got. The shirt that, you know, the hoodie that me and Coach Ray got on, you better come in and stand on business and be right uh, about what you're talking about. Because if you're wrong, they're going to call you out. And so, um, you know, the, the boys are hearing everything. And this go for the entire team. They're hearing everything that everybody is saying. The negative, the good, um, they keeping receipts on everything. So, hey, you got something to say and you want to put your face to it, do that. But what I'm telling you is, when you if you're wrong, you better have your face in the camera <laughs> and be able to take whatever comes with it. So, um, Charlotte's definitely coming out to, to set a presence um, that, you know, you can't take him off the field. Right. And that's one of the things that you got to love that he's, he's trying to step up and be that leader, which Shiloh is healthy. You know, he actually had a, a, a good off season where he was able to train and get his body right. Um, so you're seeing a different level of Shiloh this season as he prepares to get to the NFL um, that you didn't see last year, right? The biggest ground on, you know, Shiloh was, you know, he didn't like he can cover. He didn't look like this. He didn't look like that. Well, he truly wasn't fully 100% healthy. This offseason he is. So now you're really getting to see, getting to see this from the start of what it what it could look like. And so all you, you want to do is keep building every day brick by brick. And, you know, we're going to get that. But go ahead, Coach Dre. Um, oh, he just jumped off. Went off again. Okay. Also, uh. I was checking out the video also, man. This linebacker named Brandon Brandon Gant. Well, you flying all over the field too, man. He look good, bro. Yeah, uh, so Big Gant, that's one of my guys. Um, you know, I, I talked about last year. Um, he's a you know a transfer from Florida State. Um, his biggest thing was, you know, he just got here late last year. Um, uh, and once he got here and and then it took for him to get clear with all the medical stuff. And by the end, he really didn't play. So they uh, basically registered him for last year. And so now you're seeing a healthy version of him. So a lot of these players that were hurt last year, they're getting healthy. Okay. And now you're starting to see, okay, what would have happened if we truly had him last year? Now you're starting to see the vision of why we brought some of these guys in. Cause you didn't get to see him at a high level. And that's what I, you know, that's the biggest piece of it is a lot of people look at these players and they so judgmental, but you got to ask yourself, was that player truly healthy or were they trying to help the team win and risking their career longevity because they're trying to help the team win. A lot of these players got shut down middle of the season to save eligibility. So they'd be able to play this year because they had a plan. Well, you're not healthy. You can't help us win right now. We're going to shut you down. We're going to give other people opportunity, um, you know, for the future that probably wouldn't have the opportunity if you were healthy. So with b Gant, you, you just another player that you're getting to see uh, on the stage, fully healthy from the beginning of the season, being able to work out with the team from the beginning of the season, not coming in mid-summer, late summer, have to go through medical and get cleared. You're starting to see it all line up. Yeah. Coach, are you back? Can you hear? Dre, you there? You there? Yeah, I hear you. Okay, we talking about uh, B -Gat, B uh, B Gat, the linebacker. I said you were flying yeah. all over the field. What you think about yeah. it? Yep. Go ahead, Papa. Yeah, my Wi-Fi. Yeah, my Wi-Fi. Yeah. Well, I'll say I'll tell you, Ron. Yeah, I was yes, looking sir. at the uh, video that Well Out Media put out. Uh, B Gant, man, that juggler looks like boy. He was flying all over the field on the Tigers, man. What you think about B Gant? Uh, 
I mean, he he a ball player. I mean, uh, I don't think he, Coach, you break I it up. He, Go straight back it up. Might be a little uh, hurt leg. She healthy. He didn't have a full all, all season. So uh, I expect big things from him. I, I expect big things from the linebackers, period. Uh, I think uh, you go. His audio ain't working right now. He froze that. Yeah, he froze. I thought okay. okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Check. Okay, Rod. Hey, Rod, check this out, Jeff. Oh, Rod, for the Colorado to be successful this year, uh, let's look at uh. The three major additions to this team that Coach Prime brought in should have an impact on the team. What three players you think gonna have a major impact for Colorado to win this year? Just three players. I'm gonna go. Chat, y'all help us out too. I'm gonna go left tackle Jordan Seaton. Okay. Uh, I mean, I gotta have him number one on the list, right? Left tackle is the most important position for Colorado. The back right. to, uh, to Shador. Um, D line. Um, I'm gonna go with with Carter on the defensive line. Uh, Big Carter. He's he's the one Coach Prime was talking to. Um, but he's gonna give a Brandon Carter the rest. Yeah. Okay. Um. That's gonna be huge. So offense, I'm saying one offense, one defense, and then um, the third is is got to be a Travis Hunter. You you got to have Travis Hunter healthy. Um, those are those are my three key pieces to the season. Okay. Uh, really flawed said linebackers, all of them. You know her, Rob? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, we thank her for the comments, but I agree with her too. <laughs> linebacker, you right. <laughs> all of them. She said all of them. But uh, like I said, Jordan C. I like Jordan C, man. I, I think he done came a long way, man. Matter of fact, he doing better than I thought he would. I thought they were going to try to hold him out and let him get his feet up on him. But shoot, man. They put him right out there in the fire, boy. Look like he don't survive this thing, boy. I mean, one of the things that you love about Jordan C, you see the work being put in. Um, no matter where he's at, what city he's in, what state he's in, he's putting the work in. And, you know, whatever he does in his personal life outside of that, you've seen him put the work in. Um, you've seen it on tape. You've seen it on film. As reps go on, you know, driving, you know, players back, you know, seven to ten yards. So, oh, yeah. So when you see this, you know, it ain't just talk about, oh, he's the top offensive lineman. He's going out and proving why he's the top offensive lineman. And not just proving it, he's showing you day in, day out that he's sitting back and he's putting the extra reps in. You know, whatever that, whatever his assignment is, he's putting in more after and before practice. So that's one of the things that you really got to truly love about when you see a guy like Jordan Seaton is you're seeing a kid with the ability, the talent, but not just going out there and living to, you know, his ability and talent. He's put in extra work to show people that he's really bought into this process and he wants to make sure everything that's being said about him, you're going to see him and you're going to notice everything about this kid. Uh, what about LeJante, uh, Miss Williams, Crystal Wise Williams? What do you think about LeJante, uh, Coach Ray? They going to make a major impact this year for Colorado to win? You're a Florida boy. We built for this. <laughs> We we, we yeah. got to get it. Um, he uh he just he's he's already proven, and he wants to go ahead and show people he can do it on the bigger stage. So I I don't have no I have no qualms with him. I just think he's gonna get better and better as the year go on. Uh, 
going to get a little bigger, a little stronger, a little faster with Coach Mo's uh, training system. So I don't have, I don't think we have no problem. I, I, I see him in the slot, and I see him on the field uh, a lot. Um, he wanted my guys to go between for eight hundred to a thousand this year. Yeah, I think he's gonna leave. I think he's gonna leave Colorado in receiver this year, especially in that slot. The way he come out of them breaks, shoot, man, he know how to run a rock, man. And once he catch, he gone. But uh, check this out. Look at that. Mark. That's hard. Okay, he said hard. All right, all right. You know, hard's gonna be a good one too. Check this out. Uh, Shadur Sanders. Why Shadur is not getting the respect that he should be getting as a quarterback in college football from these big networks and platforms? Why you think that he started off close Dre? And I saw why he brought Caleb Mathis uh, to go change. I saw that. That was a good kick. That was a good look. I mean, it's because it's because of us, and I'm talking about us. It's because of us, because we we put the narrative out there that uh, Coach Prime playing daddy ball, and Coach Prime only doing this because it's his son, and Shador couldn't go to other schools and start, and you know it, it's just it's just a messed up narrative that just ain't the truth. Go back and look at the man offers when he came out of high school; he had every offer in in the country. Uh, he could go to probably multiple schools right now, SEC, Big Ten, whatever, and be the yeah. starting quarterback, hands down, when he walk in the door. But we, we put out the narrative that, you know, Coach Prime playing daddy ball, and uh, he just making – that's why he going places just to make sure his son can play quarterback and, and stuff like that. And, you know, so it's just – that's the narrative. But Shador Sanders has went out and showed you that many quarterbacks that played behind what he had to play behind last year, they wouldn't have put up the numbers he put up. He still put up his average. When we talked about the average last week, he still put up the average of what he would normally put up. So, uh, you know, but he he not phased. He going to keep working. He going to keep grinding. He going to keep showing people and trying to prove people wrong. And that's all you can ask for from your leader and your quarterback. So, I mean, it's just it's just the narrative that we set because nobody else said it. We, we have. What you think, Rob? He's a Sanders baby. That's all you got to know. <laughs> this is the Sanders, man. Um, nobody's going to give it to him. Um, you know, it, there's still – when you when you go out there and you look, there's still people that's doubting can Shador get it done at this level, right, um, based upon, you know, last season. But it's like when you compare and play – a lot of times people are comparing player to player and it ain't the same situation. And so you, when you see what Shador did with the offensive line and a group of people that was around him versus what a lot of quarterbacks did, yeah, it's, it's going to look night and day because you're, you're talking about different skill set of players that, you know, people had it, other people didn't. I just want you to take whatever quarterback you like and put them behind that offensive line from last year and see what they do. Right. That's going to tell you a lot. And a lot of people don't think about that. Um, but you know he gets a he just gets a bad narrative just because he's a Sanders he's Dion's son, uh, and if you if you put him up if you put him up there now the narrative is because he's Dion's son and this that, and the third and they don't they don't look at the player and the production of what he did or go and watch the film and see right some people see it they just don't want to give him credit so now you know it's it's just a motivation every day just to come and just step on people's toes you know every day. I'm him. I'm him. I'm yeah. coming for whatever whatever needs to be. I'm gonna go out and show you. When I when I came out and told you, hey, you know, no disrespect. I believe I'm the top quarterback. He wanna come out there and prove it. Now you got better production around you. So now the wins have to show. You know, if we said the offensive line is a lot better, now the wins gotta back it up. And there those are the things that you gotta you gotta take into account. But it's just a lot of people, man, that just you know, he's a Sanders, and like Coach Dre said, it's it's our own kind that's stopping him from really getting the noise that he should he should get. Right. Uh, I've got a question right here about Travis. What y'all think about Sharp and the number two behind number two? I think he's looking good. He's looking pretty good in practice so far, but I don't know if he's gonna be number two. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I think it's a battle for number two right now between him and Walter. Uh, but 
I think he probably in the driver's seat because he's been there. But uh, right. Walter has been has been really throwing the ball around, uh, putting the ball on point. He's had some nice balls in some in the videos that we've seen. So uh, I just think it's a, it's a, it's not a clear number two right now. If you were to ask me, was it a clear number two? I don't think it's a clear number two behind Shador. I think him and Stobbs right now are battling uh, for number two. But I like Walter. Uh, he's a great kid. I think, you know, when people go to asking us about next year and quarterback, I just think we, we might have a quarterback already on our on our roster that's ready. And uh, I, I like, like I said, I like the Walter kid. So I don't know if Stobbs is – I'm pretty sure if you ask Coach Prime right now, is Stobbs the number two, he might tell you that. I don't know, but – I just know that that Walter is really pushing for the play. I'm taking Walter Tyler. Um, There's no disrespect on you know Ryan Staub. Um, I think he's a good serviceable backup, but I'm just going with Walter Tyler. Uh, I'm going with the potential. I'm always going to take the potential, uh, the abilities um, to put him in at quarterback, put him in some packages. Um, whether you know you get a, put him a Cam Newton package or a Tim Tebow at the goal line package where he jumped on for touchdowns or something like that, you just when you got a kid with that type of ability, that type of frame, you got to put him on the field and utilize him. And so that's I take that type of stuff into account uh, when I'm looking at the back of quarterbacks. But Watson Taylor does have the physical abilities to be the back of quarterback, and I think a lot of people forget about that. If you take away, you know, his his, you know, grown man, you know, size versus when you're looking at him versus Ryan Staub. Um, you know, I just like his ability. I like his touch on his deep balls. Um, he's he's made a lot of great throws um, in the springtime, and I just think he just keeps building on to it. And, you know, now that he has an opportunity to really show what he can do um, differently than what he did at Vanderbilt, I think it's, you know, he's got a great opportunity. Um, but there's no clear, there's no clear number two just yet. Coach Dre, what's your assessment of the coaching staff Coach Brown have put together this year compared to last year? Um, I think I think you know he did. I think he had to hurry up. You know, sometimes when you hurry up, sometimes you you might not do the due diligence that you need. Not that I I believe he did. I just think it was. A, I know he just had to hurry up and put him a staff together. And um, because he had to hurry up because recruiting and signing day was coming up and he needed to be able to tell recruits that, you know, who was going to be here and who was going to be there. I think this year it's guys that he trusts. Like when you hear the big man say, I just couldn't sit on the couch no more and watch my brother struggle like this and knowing I could come and help him. Them the kind of guys you want. Uh when you hear when you get Warren Sapp to get up off his sofa and go get his degree so he can come help you, like you can't ask for nothing more. That's genuine love. That's genuine care. That's genuine. I want to make a difference. So uh, I, I love this staff he got this year. Livingston, again, if you close your mouth and you listen, Coach Pine will continuously tell you what you want to hear. And it's right. about loyalty. It's about and so you go out and you get a defensive coordinator who's moved himself up uh, the ranks from being a scout to being a, a position coach, coach some of the best DBs in the country. And it's people that he trusts, people that's in his inner circle who can speak up for Mr. Livingston. And then, like you say, just like, you know, I tell you people about Rob, I'm going to rock with you till the wheels fall off. When you got, when you got Mathis and you got Hart and guys like that, that you that you that you believe in, and then you go out and you get a, a coach like Coach Phil, and uh, you go back and get your receiver coach from Jackson State. So all these guys have already coached with Prime. They know what he expects, and they want him to succeed. It's more about the it's more about the group and not about them as a coach. And, I, and like I said, you can't preach that and not teach it. You can't you get what I'm saying. A lot of people right. don't get that. You can't preach it and not teach it. And I think that's what Coach Prime got in his coaching staff right now. What you think, Rob? What you think about the coach staff, you know, put together? Uh, when I look at this coach staff, I think he, I think Prime, you know, hit a lot of areas of need. Um, this all season with the coach he has brought in. Um, I don't just look at just the, the on the field coaches. I look at the support coaches that he brought in. 
um, that's going to help him make his job easier. I look at the recruiting coordinators that he's brought in, um, you know, from different places that can help him, you know. Um, and he just brung in just got he brought in some ladies from different places to help, you know, him in certain areas. So when you look at the staff overall, some of the areas and the deficiencies that Prom seen last year, yeah, he fixed some of those some of those issues this year. Now right. it's about all right, how does how do we get everything to, to, to glue together and make this one big puzzle and, and get the job done? Uh, so when I look at the coaching staff, I don't just look at the coach staff prime assemble of on the field coaches. I look at the whole big picture of the support staff, the recruiting coordinators, and he's did a hell of a job. Uh, but it's like I said, it's you got to go win now, right? You can assemble it, right? But it, it, it's time where uh, to put everything, the pieces together, and win now. Um, and, you know, and we're gonna see how all those things, you know, play itself out. And I know a lot of people don't believe in the staff or don't believe in the recruiting coordinators and what they got. But just know this, this team ain't finished adding players. This team ain't finished with understanding what the deficiencies of this team is to go get pieces out of the portal. So don't count your eggs too early. Okay. Okay. But um, I like what he done did this year, man. Cause it's way better than what he had last year to me. Especially in them in-game decisions where they couldn't make no adjustment during the game, especially on the defensive side. But it remained to be seen what they did do it this year, and I believe I believe they will. But check this out. Let's talk about that safety position back there. Rod, I want you to take Cameron, Simeon, Craig, Coach Dre. You the lawyer for Travis J. Make a case on which one should be the star. I'll go ahead, Ron. Start it off. I'll go first. I'll say this. Um, I don't count out Herm Smith, number six. Don't count him out the picture. Um, if, if an injury or something happens, uh, Herm Smith is going to be back there playing. Um, and he's going to get a lot of time back there. But when you look at Cam, Cam understands the process. He understands what Coach Prime wants, play, playing with Coach Prime for forever. So right. what you're getting out of Cam is you're going to get a player that's always going to be solid, always going to be fundamentally sound, always going to understand what's going on around him. He's going to study the playbook. He's always coming with this driving mentality because he understands that people still doubt his abilities. He's, he's fighting for a draft position too. So, you know, everything he's done is going to be on a, on a different microscope this year too. So when you look at, you know, us losing third between 30 to 40 players, you know, hey, this is it. Um, so Cam just coming down and just showing the world that hey, I'm I'm here. You're gonna see seven flying all over the field, you're gonna see seven making plays. Um, no matter what game it is, who we go up against, you're gonna see seven on that field, and he's going out there and show you what it is right now. Can't hear you. We can't hear you. Okay. Uh, we'll come back to him. That's all right. You're all right. But check this out, Rob. The last last week, we were talking about uh, how many teams will make it out of the SEC, right? Mm hmm. And y'all kept saying five teams will make it out of the SEC. And I still can't see it. Now, if Colorado go nine and three, do you still think? Now, hear me out, Rod. Hear me out. Hear me out. Help me out, Jack. Help me out, Jack. Help me out. Help me out. Look, if Colorado go nine and three and six teams, six teams in the SEC, Go nine and three and up, like ten and two and ten and one. Out of that nine and three team in the SEC, will you think 
the committee will pick them over Colorado? Y'all help me out, chat. What y'all think? Big LT. Talk to me, Big LT. If Colorado go nine and three, right? If Colorado go nine and three, do you think, and let's say LSU go nine and three, do you think the committee will pick LSU over Colorado, the Coach Prime? I don't believe they will. What y'all think? Right here, everybody having problems with the mic. But like I'm saying, I, I believe Colorado can still get in at a nine and three record because I don't think the SEC gonna put five teams in. I just really don't. Hey Bernard, just saying Dr. McIntyre is just saying, hey, I don't know the answer to that. Okay, but I'm just saying who they said that. Miss really said. They have to be 10 and 2. You really think they got to be 10 and 2? Why they got to be 10 and 2? Why they just can't have be 9 and 3? And let's say they come, they still in second, second place in their division. And LSU is up there fighting with everybody else in the SEC. You still don't think that they can make it All right, to the so playoffs? I'm, sorry, my bad. I don't know nah. what just happened, but. Um, I answered the question, right? If she Colorado said, uh, Miss, she said they got to go 10 and 2 to make play. I disagree with that, but I ain't saying ain't nothing wrong with what she's saying. But I, I still think if they go nine and three and finish second in the big 12, you know, oh uh, man, y'all killing me with that. If, huh? if they finish nine and three, they got to win the, they have to win the, the, the big 12 to get in. That's all, that's the only way. Because but you got other teams in the SEC might go nine three. They got to play one another. But you got to look at the resume, the strength of schedule. It ain't gonna compare. It's not gonna compare. You have to. You're gonna to have to go ten and two or better. Like that's the only way you're gonna get in. If Colorado goes nine and three and they're not the champions of the Big Twelve, uh -huh. it's it just not gonna happen. It's, it's gonna to be too hard because when you you're not just counting the SEC, you got to count the Big, the Big Ten too also. And those are the things. I that understand that. But you're getting 12 teams in, though, right? Right. So, for me, I've come down to about four SEC schools now, and I've added another Big Ten school in. I got the, the – whoever whoever plays in the championship game for the Big Ten, those two teams in, right? I got okay. I got whoever plays in the, S, the SEC uh, champion, whoever plays, whoever plays in that game, because there ain't no divisions no more. So, that's four teams right there out of those two okay. schools, right? So they're going to take whoever's the third best in the SEC and the third best in the Big Ten. Okay? So that's right there. That's six teams. Then you got the Big 12 championship. That's seven. You got the SEC right. championship. That's eight. So now you're down to four schools. Whoever the best P5 school is, is going to get an automatic bid. So now you're down to three schools. Who's going to have the best record out of those three schools? That's what you got to look at. Right. And so... Now you got to take into account when it comes down to the three best schools, what does Notre Dame look like? Because they're an independent conference. So with that I expect them to be in. If they're independent. I expect them to be in. Okay, so now you're down to two schools. Who gets it? That's what I'm trying to tell you. If so, they nine and three, and it's going to be some more teams in the SEC nine and three, but, and they already got four teams in, you think they'll pick up 15 over Colorado and they came in second? Strict the schedule, strict the schedule, but also keep in mind what happens in the ACC with Clemson and Florida State, right? We all expect right. Miami to win the championship, right? What happens if Florida State or Clemson have a better season than most people think they are? Now you're going to do you take Clemson, do you take a Florida State, or do you take a Colorado in that instance, right? Overtaking LSU. Uh, Ole Miss, right? Those was going. That's going to be the scenario. That's going to be pretty much probably the four teams that Colorado had to battle to get in for two spots. Should the schedule is going to play the the, P, the key piece in it all? You don't think their schedule is more 
uh, competitive than any other teams over there in the SEC, ACC? They're going to be ranked higher. Like, that's going to be the bottom because it's going to come down to rankings at the end of the day. That's how they're going to do it. It's going to come down to rankings. And when you got people, when it comes down to ranking systems and you got a committee, it's going to be about who you know and money, right? If you're looking at the money side, you're putting Colorado in. There's not even a, it's not even nothing to think about. You're going to put Colorado in because you know it's going to generate money. Right? Hey, exactly. That is. Is that what I'm saying? But also, if, if it's coming down to who's the best looking team on the field at that moment in time, Right, okay. nine and three, or they coming off a loss, or they coming off a win to get that ninth win. That's gonna play a part too. Versus what is this other team doing at nine and three? Who are they three losses versus who's Colorado three losses? Those things you got to take into account because if say Colorado beats the, the best teams but then loses to the sub the subpar teams, they're gonna take that into account when you look at LSU because they probably lost to a Texas or Georgia. Or old miss, right? Right. Those teams are are higher in the rankings. So if they lost to a team that's higher in the rankings and you lost to subpar teams, you can't it, it ain't even nothing to compare in that situation. You're gonna put an LSU in in that sense. So that's why it just it, it does matter who they play because it's all set up for that the SEC and the big team to have more teams in. Okay. Coach Dre, let's stay in the ACC I mean, for a few minutes. Okay. That's the ACC. Syracuse. Coach uh, Fran Brown. Think he's going to be able to compete with uh, Miami them this year over there? I think it's going to take him a year, but I, I believe in him. I believe in what he's teaching. I believe in what he's preaching. I think he got a heck of a football staff. That's my second team uh, this year in college. I love Coach Brown. I love uh, Coach Nick. Coach Nick was, a, a, you know, I really wish he could have stayed, but I understand why he went. But uh, I, I – I think you got to give Fran another year, another good recruiting class, and then I think he'll be he'll be ready to compete in the ACC. I don't like if he comes out and does some stuff this year. I, I won't be surprised, but I'd be shocked. But I think he needs one more year. So you know, this year is just I think a learning experience, getting his feet wet. Uh, if we can get if he can get six wins and get bowl eligible, I'll be ecstatic for him. Um. But I think it's gonna take him. I think it's gonna take him another, you know, just one, uh, one more year of another good recruiting class, and um, also the transfer portal. So uh, I, uh, that's what I got, you know. But I, I like, I like, I love uh, Coach Brown. Uh, yeah, I think he's gonna do a phenomenal job at University of Syracuse. Yeah, Rob, what you think about Coach Frank, Fran Brown, the Syracuse? They gonna be able to compete over there this year? He, he about a year or two away. Um, I love what he did with his coaching staff. I love the mentality that he's bringing to Syracuse. It's something that they needed, something they haven't had in that program. Um, so what he's going to do, my expectation for him is just get him just in, just improve on the bowl, right, from what they did last year, um, you know, and just keep building. They're going to get they're going to get the recruits up there. Um, they have a team they can recruit. Um, a right. lot of their position coaches can recruit. They came from a, wherever they came from. They were recruiting at a high level. No matter what position coach he has on his staff, they recruited at a high level from the previous school. So um, he's definitely going in the right direction. You just want to see him build. Um, you just want to see him continue to grow. Um, and, and you just wish him nothing but the best because at the end of the day, as he's more successful, we get more opportunities. And that's what the that's the picture that I look at in the situation is. How many more opportunities does it open the door for this to be more diverse, right? It's not about if you're a black coach, a white coach, anything like that. It's more about let's make the game diverse, right? And let's bring in young blood to show that, hey, there's people that can really do this, that can really lead people in a different manner than what we look at and what we see on an everyday basis. But because we're so still caught up in the 1940s, you know, we can't change and we can't elevate. And so you just want to see elevation um, and bring in new life and new blood and new interest into the sport. Uh, because the only thing that's really brought interest into the sport is really sports betting, which turned into NIL, which is turned right. into a headache. That's, yeah. headache. that's really what it is. So 
how do you make this thing relevant for people to to tune in and really watch? I can't say more people are probably gonna watch Syracuse than they ever did in their past because more right. people will be interested to see what does it look like. Being that you can, like some of your stuff has came from Georgia, what does that system look like that you're building in Syracuse? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm looking for. I'm I'm definitely gonna be checking them out just to see how they do because he came from uh, my home state, Georgia. But uh, so uh, Coach Dre. On 12 teams, let me visit last week. Help the chat out, the ones who won here last week. The 12 teams you had going way too early to play on. Uh, from the SEC, I had Texas, Georgia, Missouri, LSU, Ole Miss. From the ACC, I just I had Miami. Uh, from the Big Ten, I got Ohio State and Oregon. From the from the Pac-12, I got Utah the big and Colorado. The big, 12. I, big Big Twelve. I got Utah and Colorado, and then sure. the uh, the the other school, whoever the other big school conference is. Whichever, I don't know. I don't know who wish that who who gonna win out of that because I haven't really uh, looked at it like that. And then there's one open spot left, which it could go to an ACC team or it could go to a uh, another Big Ten team. So that that's who what did, I got. Who did you have winning the ACC? But I still got five SEC. Yeah, Miami from ACC. ACC. So you still don't. No matter how it turn out, uh -huh. and the two teams from the Big Twelve are gonna make. Yeah, all, the, 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 whoever playing the championship game, and then whoever that is, they need to have some. They gotta have decent record. Okay, okay, I go. Huh? You, you got to You get what I'm saying? Again, yeah. At the end of the day, the ACC is pushing to make a super conference. Like, let's not yeah. sit back, back and act like the boy. They're trying to. They, so they're gonna try to put their teams on display. And they're gonna try right. to put the Big Ten teams on display. That's what right. that's gonna be the that's gonna be the call. So, like I say, it could be five and three there, but it just depends on how those Big Ten teams look. Okay. But the, AC, right. the SEC, if you losing to each other, they just it's just gonna be with you know a wash. Okay. All right. I just want to revisit that. I just want to make sure you still sticking with the team you said. But uh. Oh yeah, no doubt. Me. Okay, all right. Hey, if you tune in right now, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, make a put a comment in the comment section, and share the videos if you don't mind. Raw, check this out. Way too early, way too early now. Final four, college football. Even though we don't know the brackets, uh, let me hear your way too early. Then we'll go to Dre and chat. Y'all help us out too. Four teams, you think? Way too early. I'm going Ohio State, Texas, Georgia. I'm gonna put Miami in there just because I, I I just don't know how the brackets gonna line up. If I if I had like a a, a graphic, I know I'm just saying. Yeah, right. I know. I know. I just want to see what you what your head is. I think you end up getting two SEC teams, and you're gonna get one Big Ten team. With a possibility, it might it, it might end up coming down to Big Twelve versus SEC. Honestly, for the for the Final Four, that's really how I really envision it probably coming down. If if we was to pull out a bracket today and really break it down, it probably would come down to the SEC versus the, the Big Ten for the Final in the Final Four. Hi, right, Coach Ray. I mean, what he just said is is, is correct. That's what I got. Uh, if you just ask me right off the top of my head, I got Georgia. I got Texas, I got Ohio State, and I got Miami. And I got Ohio State, but, and I got Miami because they coaches, they, they coaches meet, they 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 gotta they gotta get there, they gotta get. There. Who that? Ain't no ifs ands but the Ohio, the, the Ohio State, and the, the Ohio oh yeah, they gonna fight on it. They gonna get fired. Yeah, I I, I would they, say they this, gotta though. get there. Now Miami, I, I like that picked up, but now Miami, 
Well, they scheduled that a week. Well, see, it's, week know, it's, it's, it's going to determine about matchups because Miami catches like a Mizzou. Mizzou can get to the Final Four because it's all about matchups of you know what Georgia going to do. Missouri, University of Missouri. You know okay. what Missouri, yeah. You, you kind of you know what Georgia's going to do at this standpoint. You you kind of know what Ohio State's going to do because they pretty they're pretty much neck and neck and Texas. Them three are pretty much neck and neck with the the best rosters in college football. The reason why you put Miami in there is because they have a quarterback this year, something they haven't. Oh yeah, done. Can't. they got the second you know best. So they have the defense. The problem is could they score and keep up on offense and not make knucklehead mistakes and run the football? I think they have fixed those mistakes. But when you look at everybody potential that could be in now. There could be a sleeper pick between Oregon and I and I'm I'm just to the mind frame of Michigan is going to kick somebody this year. And most people count Michigan out. I don't think they're gonna have a down year like everybody's projecting them to have. And so if they get the right matchup, it could be a whole different other story. Because they do have a great quarterback room. They still have okay. pieces on the outside that can help them get the job done. They're going to always have an offensive line. They're returning the two best players that they had on defense that was all-stars in, in, in the championship game. They are returning them. So they're not going to be as bad as most people think they are. It's just the noise has come tremendously down because Jim Harbaugh ain't there. And so right. that can still be a problem to be reckoned with. And I think people don't understand. And the head coach is there was offensive coordinator. So nothing changed. He just became the head man. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're think, right. think logic about that. Okay. I mean, it, I mean, it's I mean, it, it it's a lot of stuff that, that needs to play out. But again, the format is now the, the four the four teams that win the conference championship, they automatically get a bye. The fifth team that gets the automatic bid is, like I say, it's going to be a mid-major conference. And then it'll set up like that. Five going to play 12. Six going to play 11. That, that's how they are set up. And whoever is the higher seed will play at home. They have the choice to play at home. So it'll be a home game. So you just don't know. Like, that's the kind of setup. You just got to get in the dance. So that's my whole thing yeah. in Colorado. I just want us to get in I just want to get to the game. You never know what's going to happen, man. You never know what's going to happen once you get done. That's right. Injury going to play a big part of it. What's that, Rob? My two super teams this year is Michigan and Alabama. Yo, two what? Two sleeper teams. It's Michigan and Alabama. Because they can mess up every us a lot of stuff. (laughs) Yeah, that's why I I can't understand why why, – yeah, we see it. I just want I can't understand. Uh, y'all keep saying y'all think five SEC teams gonna get in there when they gonna be battling each other, but that's okay. But here we go, Coach Drake. Check this out. University of Georgia played Texas this year. Who gonna win that game? That's gonna be a dog fight. It's gonna be a dog fight, but I got the Bulldogs just because. I just don't know what Texas is gonna do, but I, I like Texas. Uh, they got one of my kids on their team. I know he's gonna uh, kill me about it, but uh, I, I like I like Georgia just because of the experience in the SEC. Um, but uh, Texas is gonna give them everything they want. It'll be a three point game. It, it, it's it's gonna come down to who got the ball last. Uh, so whoever got the ball last, but I think it's gonna be Georgia. Uh, just because I I like what Georgia bring back on defense. Uh, I like what Georgia bring back on defense. I uh, I like what uh, Texas bring back on offense, but I just like what uh, Georgia bring back on defense. I'm from Georgia, but I I, I got right Texas, man. Texas that showed me a lot last year, man. <laughs> I'm serious, bro. I, I'm, I'm from Georgia, but I just like what Texas brought in, man. I'm serious, man. They got some talent, bro. They might throw you out of the state with that one. They'll be white. They might throw you out of the state with that one. They'll be white. Hey, I'm just saying. I just like what Texas doing, man. Rob, what you think, Rob? See, this is the hard part for me. Is I got somebody that plays for the University of Texas. Got somebody that uh, I'll rock with real hard that plays for the University of Texas that I know. Um, 
Dang. Yeah. I'm, going, I'm going with Georgia. But I I got I got somebody that, that's close that I know person that's close that plays for University of Texas. I ain't gonna say his name, don't worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> y'all ain't gonna know. Uh, but also hey, he good got, watching. Yeah, but also got close to you know a couple of recruits. Um Last year, uh, that place for the University of Texas that chose Texas over a certain school. I'm not gonna say who that school is, <laughs> but a certain school. So um, it's gonna be tough. Um, like you said, you I, I like the balance in Texas offense, um, the depth they have um, in each in each room for the, the quarterbacks, the running backs, wide receivers. Um, I'm still questioning about a couple spots on the offensive line, but. Overall, they're going to have a solid offensive line. Uh, defense, they're going to fly around. It's going to look like an SEC defense. Um, but I, I just got to see them stop the run against some, some real dogs, and that's going to be Georgia, and they're going to be put to test. When it get down to the nitty-gritty, can you stop Georgia from running the football uh, to a win game? And if, if you can, you'll win. If you can't, you're going to lose because they can control the clock. Um, but to me, honestly, it truly don't matter because them two probably gonna end up matching up back for the SEC championship. So you should get two yeah. rounds of them playing this season. Okay. All right. All right, guys. All right, that's all I got. Let's it's it's rapid fire time. I know Coach Ray is excited about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, well. Long, long man, we brought. <laughs> hey, I asked that man, but he wiped their head. Boy, he said, "All right, you good now." <laughs> <laughs> I just won't bring up about that wine no more. I ain't, I ain't gonna put him out there like that no more. Boy, he said, "What well, be trying to get?" <laughs> All right, chat. If y'all don't mind, y'all hanging here, here with us. We ain't got long. Uh, we can do a segment of the show that called Rapid Fire. I just need one answer. When I ask you the question, chat, I hope you come along with us. And don't forget, it's brought to you by Whitaker Business Supply. Uh, if you need lumber, windows, doors, sheetrock, roofing, any kind of construction need that you need, contact Wayne Whitaker at 770-775-2086. Thank him for sponsoring tonight's show. All right, rapid fire. Here we go. Here we go now. Here we go. Quarterback. Houston, Texas. C.J. Stroud. L.A. Chargers. Justin Hubert will win their division this year. Which quarterback will you? Help me out, Jack. I'm going with C.J. I'm going with C.J. Stroud. Going with C.J. Stroud in the Texans. Just getting uh digs that that's gonna help my, gonna help Jid out a lot. I'm going with uh I'm going with CJ. Oh no, I know you didn't say that. Really plug, really plug. Uh, I, I guess your female, your female said uh CJ Stroud. Everybody saying CJ Stroud, Travis. He said the Chargers. Yeah, he said the Chargers. He didn't say the Colts. He said the Chargers. No, nah, I didn't I say, say the Colts. I said the Chargers. Like, huh? Yeah, I, yeah, that was. I, I, he he it, it's, it's a background for a lot of people. Hey, listen. Yeah. Listen, now. Nah. That's the reason why I was thrown off, because he, he says CJ. And I'm like, wait a minute now. Somebody in that division now. Nah, just <laughs> but now, um, hey, before before I answer this, man, chat, man, make sure y'all comment. Let us know as we do this rapid fire, because we want to make sure that you guys are involved with the show as well. We're going to put it up there. We're going to put some comments up there. Uh, but... I'm going CJ, but if you would put another team up there, yeah, like who? Know how we're rolling? Like who? <laughs> <laughs> he trying to, he trying to, he trying to put me in the hot seat. He gonna put me in the hot seat. You know I, 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 hey, let's revisit what we did last last week. Uh, this question: Baseball. Who are the who had the best baseball career? <laughs> Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, or uh, Bo Jackson. <laughs> Talk me off, Rod. Is, is I'm, I'm going Coach Prime, man. I'm going Coach Prime. <laughs> I'm going Coach Prime. 
I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's Coach Prime. I mean, I mean, Bo didn't play, <laughs> Bo didn't play for the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, Bo had a broken match up here, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, he didn't get to the world. So it's always going to be Prime. I was trying to put Coach Dre on a hot seat. You know, we, we it's I already know you. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, Coach Prime could be listening. Now you better be careful. Check this out. I R and B music group. One twelve. A bars to me. Can't pick one. One twelve. A bars to me. One boys to me. I, I like one twelve. I ain't gonna tell you no lie. I like one twelve. Boys to me and cool, but I like one twelve. I think. Uh, I like I one twelve. Whole group. I didn't know what the chat is. I like one twelve. What what what's the yeah. chat saying? I, got, I, I need to know what the chat is saying on this. All right, what the chat say? Help us out, chat. Bars to me or one twelve. We just need one answer. 112 for me. I got 112 all day. I said boys and men. All right. Uh, King said 112. Stephen Woodley said boys to men. Travis said boys to men. Chris said boys to men, but I love 112. Really flaw. Uh, man, that's close. It's close right. Like, okay, 112 coming on. 112, you got boys to men. J dot. Boy, 112 walking down. <laughs> 112. I, I, that's what I like too. I like 112. I like 112. <laughs> Hey. Hey. Which team would you like to see draft Shadur Simon as their quarterback? The Dallas Cowboys or the Los Angeles? Uh, the Raiders. The Raiders. Las Vegas Raiders. Las Vegas Raiders. Help me out, Chad. I know what he going to say. I know what he going to say. Cowboy. 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 I I I'm taking I'm taking Las Vegas Raiders. What better place to put Shador Sanders as the guy, the megastar on the strip? You get to see him live in action. <laughs> All the stars, baby. Bring the Vegas, baby. <laughs> Bring him uh, Vegas, we, baby. We America. Hey, I got to go with the Raiders on this one. I like to see him at the Raiders, too, man. Bring him. Hey, listen. I'd rather what? see him in the... I'd rather see him in the... What? Hey, listen, yeah. Black, black what do you mean, for what? what? The Cowboys. Hey, bring, bring him on to Vegas, baby. I like to see him in Vegas. We America. It'll make him more league, more competition. Competition. It'll be more competitive. Check this out. He got another question. All right? Start with you, uh... Coach Ray, rap, Ice Cube, a T.I. Who you got? Mm. Ice Cube, a T.I. 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 Watson now. It's George, boy. I'm from George. I got Hey man, I gotta go with Tip Drill. I mean that that you know that you grew. I grew up. You know what I'm saying on Cube, but what T.I. did when when he came out. When uh when he came out uh you got to give Cuban respect he a he, he a pioneer a, a rap but when you just come to lyrics and putting down music you got to go with Ti who you got Rock I'm going Ice Cube no Vaseline no Vaseline yeah okay I right, here we go I I don't need that alone here we go female rapper. Nicki Minaj or uh, MC Light? MC Light. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh. MC Light or uh, Nicki Minaj? I'm going to roll with Nick. I'm going to roll with Nick. Help me out, chat. Who y'all got, chat? Who you got? I'm gonna roll with Nicki Minaj. All right, all right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna pull one from last week. I know Coach Dre gonna sweat again, but here we go. <laughs> yeah, I need an answer this time, Coach Dre. Hey, I don't see T Nicole. T Nicole ain't in here. You want red wine or white wine? Red wine or white wine? What you got? What you got, Dre? Whatever they drinking, cause I ain't drinking it. It ain't gonna make me no <laughs> Red wine, baby. Red wine, baby. <laughs> Red wine yeah, all the yeah, way, man. Yeah, Say that, what? I mean, that's what y'all, I, okay. If that's what, yeah, but I'm just telling you, I'm not gonna be drinking none, so don't. 
You know, it's all make me laugh. Okay, nah, all right. I just want to put it down for the chat. Uh, they said red, red, neither, red. Hope you know, wine. Red wine. Both depends on where we're going. All right, check this out. You got a good question right here. Check this out. Female group. Rapper in our R&B. I'm going to name three. Which one are you going to take? Salt and Pepper, SWV, or Escape? I'm going SWV. I'm, I'm going with Escape. Escape? Well, you, you guys that quick. You must really like somebody in that group. Must be Ken. No, I'm just saying, yeah, man. Listen, but they, they can say. What I'm saying is, when they first came out, that was a full group of singers. <laughs> this dude was really And then, uh, with the girl, the girl, the girl you guys never boy, ain't got it out my mind, boy. <laughs> so yeah, escape. Ain't no if ands and buts about it. I mean, SWV a close second, but escape. They really good. Hey, the most exposed, explosive player in college football. Michael Vick or Reggie Bush? Woo! Come on with Help me out, chat. Who was the most explosive? I ain't talking about who was the best player. I'm talking about whenever they hit that had that football in their hand, Bush. they take that bad boy in 80 yards in I'm no going time. Reggie. I'm going who, Reggie. Who, who was the most explosive? I'm going Reggie, but that's a hell of a question right there. That's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, I don't think it's a wrong. I'm go Just in college, not pros, not college. College, college. We're talking. We, listen, saying, we're talking. We talking about college. We ain't talking about the NFL. I'm talking yeah. about in college. We're talking about in college football, not not NFL college football. I'm right. Now we talk oh, NFL. Yeah, bro, I'm, I'm talking I'm Michael Vick. Who you got? No, no. I'm. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, you, you saw him play at Virginia Tech. You, you watched him. You watched him. Oh man. Yeah. Man, yeah. you, you ain't. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Vic. It's Vic. It's Vic. You know. Reggie Cole uh, hey, listen, I like I, I'm taking I'm taking Reggie Bush in college. I'm taking Michael Vick in the NFL. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you I'm talking it. about in college. college. Oh, it it was Bush, Bush there. Well, he was on a different level, man. But he, but again, he he had a one-two punch. Like every I mean, time that, he took the ball, that, he was taking it different. That, 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 that ain't no knock on him or, or take away with none of his shine, but. All the weight of the world was on 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 Vic when he was at Virginia Tech. I mean, Reggie had Leonard, he had Lindell, he had other. You get what I'm saying? So that's why it was. So, okay. You know, it, you could you couldn't just focus in on him when you came to Virginia Tech. You knew if you could stop Vic, you could win. You know what I'm saying? Okay. If Reggie had an off day, if Reggie had an off day. You could still, you know, USC could still get a dub. If Vic couldn't have an off day, so that's why I'm but going see with me. I I take Reggie Bush in all facets of like the 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 punt returns, things like that. So I get or right, if you're just talking just strictly offense and take out the special teams, I can get one thousand percent why you go with Vic. Um, Vic was just special, man, as, as a quarterback, and you know now you got to defend him running the option or just taking off. It was just different. It, it was a night day different when you seen Virginia Tech, and they had a defense to go with Michael Vick. So. Man, that, it, it, it was one thing to see in, in college, uh, but I was looking at the overall player in that sense in college, and I, that's why I had went with uh, Reggie Bush. The best linebacker. I, mean, it's no, I don't think there's no wrong answer. I don't think there's no wrong answer. No. Hey, the best linebacker in college football, Ray Lewis or Brian Bosworth? Ray Lewis. Yeah, it's really y'all didn't see Brown, uh, uh, Brownswell, uh, at Oklahoma. Yeah, Bars was just I'm a kid. I, I, I didn't, yeah, I saw what a ball, boy. Oh, no, boy. Bank? You yeah. think Ray Lewis was better than him in college? What I'm taking Ray Lewis. He was just, I mean, the ball, what, what, I, 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 I don't see what all the hype was behind him. I ain't like, what you I mean? You see how the hype was? Uh, he came down here to Miami, and them boys put that thing on him. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm taking Ray Lewis all day, every night. You gonna take Ray Lewis all day? He ain't got nothing to do with the NFL. I'm, you know, yeah, I don't like. I don't even think and that's a comparison. I all right, hey, hey, all right. That's all I got, more rap. That's, huh? All right, check this out. NFL. Let's talk about the NFL. Let's switch to the NFL. 
Appreciate y'all chat for uh, participating in the rapid fire. Uh, the Buffalo Bill traded Stefan Diggs to Houston, Texas. Did the Bill make the right decision? Uh, I know the Houston made a good decision, but I'm talking about the Bills. Did the Bills make a good decision by giving them away Stefan Diggs? I I do. I, I think it was time. It wasn't. It just wasn't going anywhere. Um, I just think Stefan Diggs played that that year there. Um, you would have it would have been serious problems um uh, with the Bills. Um, I just think it was time to 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 let it go. Um, uh, I think they made the the right decision. What you think, Dre? I mean, if we talking about for the locker room and the chemistry and stuff, I guess so. But I guess he your best receiver. I don't see where you getting that production from. Uh, do your quarterback feel comfortable with any other receiver like he had got with D? And I just, I just don't know. I, I, I wouldn't have done it. I, I would, I would have, and you would have had to one give thing me a little bit. One thing I love about it, though, uh, you would have had to give me a little bit. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Jer. No, I'm just go saying, ahead, I just, I just, I wouldn't have did it. They didn't I get nothing did back it. in return, bro. They would have had to. I mean, I don't, I don't even look at it as they didn't get anything back in return. I just think it was time. Uh, it's running course. You, you just ain't going to get over the hump with them, too. Um, but now, who who the owners gets puts on right now is Josh Allen, and yeah. that's what it really gets put on. All the excuses of this, that, and the third, and it was this player fault and that player fault. You ain't got nobody to blame now. They took they just took everything from you. Now it's on you. So hey, you gotta you you gotta take it for what it is now. Now we gonna see if if you say you that guy, you say you the man, you want everything on your shoulders. Guess what? It's on your shoulders. Oh, he that guy now, Rob. You think he ain't that guy? He ain't proven it in the big games. I mean, he throws a couple of interceptions, but she. You got to, at some point, man, you got to prove it in the big games. And you done been in big games. You done been. Yeah, you done been in the big game. So you can't, I mean, how many opportunities, opportunities, opportunities going to get? Now, I can say you can probably take a Josh Allen and you start comparing him to like a Peyton Manning, right? It took Peyton Manning a while to get over the hump. And once he got over the hump, he wouldn't want a Super Bowl, right? And right. then he goes to Denver and does it again. So it, Josh Allen might be on that situation, but Josh Allen also went throwing to two Hall of Famers, too, also, at the right. receiver position and had a solid tight end with Dallas. So you you can't – and had a solid running game. So you can't be mad at that, but I just think it's going to take some time for, you know – uh Allen to get over the hump because it's it's gonna be hard to beat a Kansas City Chiefs team um right now. That's his that's his hurdle is just beating the Kansas City Chiefs. Right. And if he once he finally does beat the Kansas City Chiefs, he, he more likely probably win that Super Bowl that year. Really flaws that one day over the cap. I think it was over the cap. I think, I, I, think believe, it was. I believe the Bills was, but I think they, they, they need to do something though. It, it was yeah. it was coming. Now, I, I think that they should have made this move way earlier and didn't let go of the other wide receiver, but it is what it is. He's wrong. It's, That's it's, what it's I'm saying. I think that, it's like they re, it's like you rebuilding and you already got a quarterback. I don't I don't get that. Like you already got a quarterback and you trying to rebuild. I don't I don't understand it, but I mean, you know I don't understand it. You know, you just I mean you just made That's one of the way back in the division to me. From way right. back, how you think? How you think uh, Aaron Rodgers gonna come out this year for the Jets? How they gonna come out? I mean, he got to stay healthy. Uh, if he get hurt, I think. Yeah, I mean, he gonna yeah. If he stay healthy, you know, if he can stay upright, yeah. But right. my thing is, he getting older. Did, did he really heal like he should? And if he get hurt one more time, I think he gonna you know he gonna have to call it quits. Uh, but I hope he stay healthy. I want him, you know. Cause he he all time he all time great in my book, uh. But I just don't know. And do you got the offensive line to keep him healthy? Cause you know he ain't gonna be mobile. He definitely ain't gonna be able to move around that great. So I, I just hope they got an offensive line. Yeah, I, I truly believe Aaron Rodgers stays healthy. The Jets win the division. That's, I that's, that's yeah, all I that, Yeah.
I see the same thing. I mean, you you went and added some. You went and added pieces to the offensive line. You went and added a receiver, Mike Williams. You went and added some pieces on the defensive side of the ball. Like now, all you got to do is go draft, which draft decent. You got you got opportunity, but with with what the Buffalo's Bills losing so much of their their high end talent and replacing them, you got to see now. So. Man, this female name really what the name really flop. Boy, she throwing some haymakers in here all day. She must know the sport. She does. Okay, all right. Check check this out. Uh, Coach Drake on. Okay, Rob, make a case for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Make a case for which quarterback and star for Pittsburgh. Uh, Russell Wilson. Uh, who the other quarterback? Justin. Russell Wilson is gonna start. I just, I <laughs> Russell Wilson gonna start. Justin Fields gonna be the backup. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I ain't even. Hey, gonna go you don't think he got no chance? No chance. No. It's not. It's you not that. It's not that. I just think the plan is already in place. You don't. You don't go sign Russell Wilson and then trade for Justin Fields if you don't have a plan. I think that's the ultimate plan. Is hey, Russell Wilson. He's a starter. Justin Fields. We just want you to sit back and learn, and we finna reset your clock. And let you mature as a young quarterback, a uh, young quarterback, and develop the traits that you should have had when you're in um, Chicago. This is okay. a reset for Justin Fields' career. That's all this is. Now it's just about getting it right, and I think that's truly what that's gonna happen. Um, but who am I? Okay, but I think Justin Fields got a chance, man. That, that my homeboy. I think he got a chance, bro. I think he got a chance. If they give him the chance, I, th that's my thing. I don't. I just think it's Russell Wilson's job, and Russell Wilson has to either play poorly or get hurt for Justin Fields to take over. Ooh, that's just how boy. I view it. Oh, boy, you throw the dagger then. <laughs> you throw the right, dagger then. I'm, I'm just being honest because one thing you can count for, right? They, the Steelers are going to have a good defense. You can count for that all day long. As long as TJ Watt is healthy, they're going to have a good defense. Now it's just. Can you get a quarterback to complete 65 to 70% of their passes and the wide receivers catch the ball? Because oh, they yeah. are throwing some decent balls to them and the wide receivers dropping the ball. But as right. long as they wide receivers catch the ball and the quarterback completes 65 to 70% of the, the the catches and, and the throws, they'll be fine. They're, now, my question with the Steelers is, I don't know how good the offensive line play is going to be. That that has been a problem okay. in a couple the previous couple of years. But one thing about the Steelers, they find a way to win the game. I don't care if it's ugly, if it's by a big lead, they find a way yeah. to win football games. And that's all you can right. ask for. It just give me a puncher's chance in the fourth quarter to go win the game. And I think they got that. And they got my they got my Thomas. So they're never out of it. So I, I got to give credit where credit is due on that part. Mike yeah. Thomas ain't had a losing season. So they, they go not have one. Season. Not one. Not one. But check this out. Uh, is uh, Michael Penix, the quarterback for Washington, getting overlooked in this NFL upcoming draft? You think he's overlooked? Say that one more time. Michael Penix, the quarterback from Washington that entered the NFL draft. You think he's getting overlooked by the rest because of the rest of the quarterback that's coming out? I don't think he's getting overlooked. I just think when it comes to injuries, NFL teams start acting weird. And when he had the two injuries that he sustained in college and working himself back through, uh, NFL teams, they're, they're worried. You know what I'm saying? Because how long are you going to last in the league with those type of injuries, right? That's the, that's the risk that you run. So we'll see. What do you think about Michael Penn, Coach Ray? Think you're gonna overlook? Yeah. Uh, he my he my guy. Uh, I like Michael Penix. I think he. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, Michael Penix, my guy. Uh, he my guy. Uh, I think he's. I, I me are. Uh, me uh, honestly, I think he the back in the draft. 
really think he's the best quarterback in the uh, but in the world, you know, but he my guy. If I'm drafting somebody, I'm taking Michael Penny. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's that's who I'm taking myself, man. I'm taking that. All right, let's. We ain't got long. What we got? Uh, about got about five more minutes. Uh, that's the end on uh, Coach Brown and the Colorado Buffaloes. So, how do you think the linebacker group gonna perform this year for Colorado? And who? You hear me? You hear me, Coach Dre? Chat, y'all, help me out. How you All think right. that linebacker group gonna gonna uh play for come out for Coach Prime and the Colorado Buffalo? The linebacker group. Think they gonna come together, get it together this year? Can you hear him? I can't hear him. Can't hear you. Uh, so for me, I do. Uh, I believe they will get it done. I do think they will go out. I don't think. I know they're probably going to go out and get another linebacker um, to help out this linebacker room. I guess it's everything is being evaluated right now. Uh, when you look at this linebacker room, uh, do we have all the pieces that we need? I think we're about a piece or two away in the linebacker room to really solidify that room. I would love for us to add a playmaker linebacker. Um, sideline to sideline um, can yeah. play and run our pass. doesn't have to come off the field. I would love for us to add that. Will we be able to add it in the spring portal? It's still to remain to be seen. Uh, but I'm not counting out Coach Hart and, you know, his ability to coach. Because okay. when you look at the obstacles that he had to face last year, with his linebacker room and the, the defensive line, what they put in front of him, you know, it's going to be, it was, it just didn't make sense. So um, this year, I think he, he elevates his linebacker crew. Um, and another thing is the linebackers being healthy. It's the main thing. Right. Um, but also I just, I just truly believe what, we're going to have a, a better front up in front of the linebackers. And that's the real thing for us. Yes, you could say the linebackers follow each other. The linebacker play was terrible, this, that, and third. But you also got to look at what do we really accomplish on that defensive line that can help the linebackers to put them in a better position. You know, you can turn on tape and you can see it from different angles where our linebackers, it, it looked a real suspect. But also – there's going to be some improvement, all right? Um, and with our defense line improving, um, that's going to help out the linebacker play. Go ahead, Coach Dre. You're on mute. I mean, yeah, I mean, Coach Hart going – I mean, I think we're going to be better because of the simple fact is he he's not had these guys for a whole year. And then in the ball – Boys that just came in like Webster and them guys already done played. He froze up. Okay, that's all. That's all. Hey, uh, just want to say I appreciate everybody who tuned in tonight. Uh, thank you for uh everything that y'all have done participating in the chat. And Rod, I just want to say I appreciate you for being with me on Sundays. Like I told you uh, on the phone, ever since I hooked up with you, I just started in January, January the seventh. Now it's April the seventh. I had 500 subscribers, but ever since I hooked up with you, I don't gain. I gained almost 80. So I appreciate you for being a, a good sportsman, uh, willing to help people and guide me through this. You do thing. I appreciate it. Hey, it's it, it kind of strange. I'll be telling my supervisor. I said, I got my mentor. She said, that's your brother? I said, no. I said, nigga, my brother. He said, how you going to be your mentor? He look younger than you. I said, hey, it don't age. Ain't that but no. I said, he know his stuff. He just know his stuff. But uh, I really I mean, appreciate you, bro. And like I say, I always you. check out your uh, panel. That really, really flop. She be on your panel. Yeah. That's why she knows so much stuff. Okay, I kept looking at the name. I said, man, this this name sounds familiar. 
But when I looked at your broadcast, I think you did one last Monday. I think I think y'all did it in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I said, what are y'all doing coming on in the afternoon? Because I was on my break. Uh, Major Joe came out there and said, really, you on YouTube at work? Really, Bernard? I said, I didn't know Rob was coming off this time. Cause, oh, uh, no, you know what I said? And then when I looked at the, uh, your screen, what your palin, I that's why I saw uh, that name right there. I said, she know a lot of football. She, she in her in her uh, chat. So that's what it came to. I didn't mean no harm by that, Miss Blum. I'm sorry, but uh, it's good that uh, the females are into the conversation as well. Man, I appreciate you, bro. Like I say, uh, couldn't have done it without you. Sunday night, one of my, my one of my biggest night, man. Like I say, I appreciate everything you and Coach Dre has done and everything. Cause I first started watching you before uh, you came aboard with me. I said, man, this dude keeps saying all this stuff. This dude don't know nothing. But every time you make a prediction, but it had come true. I said, man, I said, this dude do know what he's talking about. So, man, hey, man, I appreciate you, bro. Like I said, I'll be watching your show. Keep up doing the good work. I'm praying for you and uh, Coach Drake and also your panel and your uh, followers that y'all have a good year. And matter of fact, my, my friend, my girlfriend, she bought my ticket to uh, Colorado pregame for the uh, celebration right. spring game. So I got that today. I said, you ain't buy two? She said, uh -uh. She said, oh, you ain't gone? I said, okay. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a part like a rock star out there. <laughs> but uh, give me your last word, Rob. We're gonna get out of here, man. Oh uh, man, first I just just appreciate you for having us on as always. Um, to the subscribers, I know y'all missed us being on in the afternoon. Uh, y'all been y'all been wondering where we at, what we doing. Um, it's a lot of behind the scenes things that we can't talk about publicly yet. Um, but we got some in store for a lot of you guys, um, some things, some exclusive stuff that you guys normally don't see um, that we're working on. So y'all just be patient with us. Just stay rocking with us. I promise y'all this thing is going to go to another level. Um, and we just, you know, we're just so thankful um, that we're able to help, um, in, you know, a lot of people. Um, what I will say is we're going to have a class on Router Man Media. It's going to be a private class. Um, if you want to get involved, um, and it's going to be talking about elevating, um, if you have a YouTube channel, elevating your, your value on YouTube, elevating your presence on YouTube or, um, elevating, say if you're a manager, or supervisor, elevating how, how to elevate people to another level to help you elevate to in your life. So, uh, we're going to do a, a little private class on that. If you want to join or how to, uh, join the class, all you gotta do is reach out to us on social medias or uh, email us and we'll get back to you. But we are going to do a private class on how to elevate managers, supervisors and uplift people and bring them to a different level. So if it's something that you're aspiring to be a manager or a supervisor or your manager supervisor and how to elevate people to a different level, um, we're here for that. Um, I feel like every day I'm, all I do is life coach people. So um, if you need some help with, you know, in that realm of, you know, and just want to talk about life and, you know, um, and helping that part, you can also reach out to us for that. But um, thank you guys as always. Thank you guys to all of the sponsors that sponsored us these previous Sundays and let's continue to sponsor us in the future Sundays. We appreciate that. That goes a long way. Y'all go support BY. Y'all go subscribe to his channel um, and we're going to bring y'all more things to come. We got a couple more special guests to come on Sunday. Y'all just be patient. Um, a couple of y'all favorite content creators might pull up on Sunday. Y'all never know and come join. So uh, y'all just be patient as we get as we do this Sunday show. It's going to elevate every Sunday, and we're going to add more people to this show. Um, and it might not be all in one show, but we're going to elevate and put somebody on each show as a special guest as a partnership with us. So. Y'all just be patient and um, continue to rock with us. And as always, All right. man, it's nothing but but love. But uh, Rob, I'm gonna let you work on Miss uh, Really Flawed and join the show. I'm gonna let you work on that one thing. If I, you I can get it, you're still participating. I'll let you work on that. Yeah, okay. I, I, that name doesn't familiar now. But uh, where you going live again? Wait, you got another show coming up this week? Uh, I don't want you to me all God like you did nah. last time now. I don't uh, want to lose my got, job, bro. No, we got we got um 
we got about three or four shows that we're gonna put out this week. Okay. Um, so it might be two live, two podcasts. We ain't, we ain't finalized for what we're gonna do totally yet. Um, but we'll probably do about three or four shows. Sunday shows, that's a lot guaranteed. We got that locked in every Sunday. Um, oh, yeah. but I'm just talking about outside the Sunday show. Yeah. Um, we we probably got like three or four shows we're gonna do. Um, two of them might be podcasts, two of them might be lives, or we might do three lives and one podcast. Depending on everybody's time frame, everybody's time schedule of who's coming on the podcast. Um, that's really what's gonna come down to, but we got we got some things that we we got coming down the pipelines. Okay, all right, all right, buddy. Hey, man, once again, I appreciate everybody. If you don't mind, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and also, to, if you haven't subscribed to Raw's channel, go over there and do so right now. If you don't mind, I want to thank the sponsors, man. I'm telling you, I've been getting a lot of emails, man. I didn't know that many people were watching the show that had business, but. They want to help and contribute in a way they can, man. I appreciate y'all for doing that once again. I appreciate you all and Coach Dre. Man, y'all the best. And I hope y'all have a good week. Until next Sunday, y'all be blessed, man. Peace. All right, chat. Appreciate y'all. Now I got to run this advertisement before I go off. I got to give him a last. I got to give him a last one. To end the broadcast so I can send it to him. I gotta get me a producer.